disclaimer! I'm the other one, you bastard! Brought to you by supporters who probably have better taste than this schmuck. If you've ever wondered how these videos were made, check out the series of four behind-the-scenes streams, each covering a different aspect of video production from start to finish. Peel back the curtain and see how Dr. Lockdown Reviews works. Or just wait for the edited version in a week or two, I guess. I don't f care. I'm not your mother. I'm not going to tell you what to do. When you hang around the fandom long enough, you start to notice a few patterns. Certain characters always come back, over and over. Count how many G1 Optimus Primes there are in your collection at present, no doubt it's more than one. Shows tend to get the same number of seasons, it's sort of like Gabe Newell, only they can't count to four instead. Unless it's Cyberverse. Best show, watch it now! Haslabs always release, and people who can afford it but choose not to, on principle, always come back after the shipping date, asking if anyone still has any. Not those who can't afford it, those who specifically want to send Hasbro on message. And of course, complaints come back over and over again. People complain about not getting the figures they want, or figures not being accurate, or figures not being stocked in their region. That last one is very much justified, but one complaint I've found never has been is the criticism of Silver Studio Series cars. Due to the nature of vehicle licensing, many cars that end up in the film are silver, and consequently we end up with a metric f ton of toys like this. And every single time, without fail, people claim they are the worst thing since sliced make toys thrust. As social media becomes more vitriolic, especially shitter with Muskrat's algorithms prioritizing toxicity over genuine cooperation, Mirage has experienced a heightened version of this anger. If you didn't know any better, you'd assume that he was the worst Studio Series toy to ever exist. Well, you know what? I do know better. I'm tired of everyone shitting on my poor boy here. I know at this point, almost a full year after Rise of the Beasts premiered, not many people still care, but I love this little deluxe. And I just want to take a minute to appreciate how the designers were able to craft something this nifty in spite of the restrictions placed on them. Greetings Cybertronians, I'm Dr. Lockdown, and today's diagnosis pertains to Studio Series 105 Mirage. Not Jazz, Mirage. This is Transformers. Names get reused. This really shouldn't be something contentious at this point. Not everything has to be G1 accurate. This toy often causes a form of whiplash when the community starts talking about it, but I guarantee it's nowhere near the whiplash of the designer's wiki page. Shuhei Umezu is a bit newer to the Takara team than most peeps who work on Mainline, previously working on the Zoids line and jumping over around the Bumblebee movie. He actually designed one of the best toys from that film, which I covered previously on this channel. He also tackled its exceptional retool in the pre-war line, and many other brilliant outings like Legacy Volcanicus and Bitchcomer. But then he's also done snooze fests like the recent Insecticons, and also... Oh dear god, why? Honestly, I thought the G.I. Joe team worked on this thing, but according to the wiki, this does have Takara assistance, so... Uh, now I don't know what to think. Fortunately, when combined with the vehicle mode expertise of Sam Smith, no, not that Sam Smith, we get an absolutely killer Porsche 911 mode. Honestly, it's already really surprising they managed to get this vehicle mode to begin with, given Porsche's insistence on not being associated with war toys. Yes, much like Volkswagen, every company has a price, except Ferrari, who's currently in an arranged marriage with Mattel just so they can get citizenship in the clearance aisle at the reject shop. Real talk, this is most likely why Mirage isn't in any way related to his G1 counterpart. There's a lot of hypotheses on it, but honestly, I think it's mostly due to Porsche wanting creative control on the portrayal of the character. It's easier to slap an existing name onto someone new than arguing back and forth with a car company because they have unreasonably high demands with script changes. Though, given how flamboyantly gay Mirage is, I can't imagine the script requests were that unreasonable. Work, friends? You've been inside me. Of course, this sort of vehicle mode is right up Smith's alley, with wonderful mechanical detail that never becomes overbearing compared to the main event, the silver finish. I love the way they've done the front, where they let the gunmetal-based plastic bleed through an actor's highlights. Some of the earlier Studio Series Deluxe cars used a lighter grey as the base plastic, which meant that wherever they couldn't put the silver ended up being really bland and boring. It's always something I found annoying, even with my favourites in the line, but it's becoming less and less common these days between this and Sideways. It was also a brilliant figure you should grab at some point. Because they use a dark gunmetal under the grey, they can just let it bleed through instead of wasting more paint apps to pick out those extra details. This allows them to do things such as outline the headlights, or properly define the air intakes. At least, I think they're air intakes. Again, not a car guy. Would send you over to Lazy Eyebrow for greater clarification, but... Uh. Yeah. 
Damn. I also love that they went to the trouble of including a tiny yeah. Autobot symbol. One thing that constantly bugs me is that Studio Series toys keep ignoring the inclusion of bot and con symbols. Like, they're Transformers, right? I get not having symbols makes more sense from a disguise perspective, but the symbols are iconic. Don't forget them! The metallic blue is also a real treat. I don't know if this is a full application or just some clear blue placed on top to retain the shininess, but whatever method they used, this just looks lovely. The blue continues around the side, though its inclusion is a bit limited. This makes sense though, it's accurate to the original car mode. So although more blue would be more striking, neither vehicle mode fans nor Porsche would be happy with such. At least this frees up the budget to add orange headlights, which f yes, these look wonderful. Sadly, the hubcaps aren't painted, which is a real shame, but hey, at least they added tail lights completely in red. Combined with how clean the back looks, this vehicle mode gives off a real premium feel. And honestly, I'd argue the clear plastic adds to that. It's not unpigmented like some of the earlier examples, which leads to a very cheap looking vehicle mode. They've also added a slight smoky dye to it, so it gives that clear look without making the thing seem like an Age of Extinction toy. Yes, I mean that in a derogatory manner. I honestly never understood the love for opaque windows. The black ones are fine, I guess, but people always go nuts for the tune style, especially with that Selects 5 pack, and honestly, I just think it looks ugly. As such, I'm glad the live-action portion of Studio Series is retaining this at least, and I'm also glad this figure did them in a fairly decent way, going all the way to the back of the car with minimal panel interruption. You have no idea how annoyed I get when they cheap out on the back windows and make it painted in comparison to everything else. It always looks jarring, so I'm glad they've done this in this format. Even if it may cause some, uh, not necessarily issues later on, but definitely oddities. Overall, it's a pretty nifty vehicle. A lot of what he does well has been seen in Studio Series before. I mean, there's been a shit ton of well done silver cars in the line, but it's always nice to see these boons return on a recent release. And one thing that he does that a lot of those examples don't is weapon storage. The gun stores underneath and it doesn't interfere with anything else. They didn't have to do this, but they did and it's quite lovely. All in all, as far as vehicle modes go, it's a well-rounded package. But of course, that's not where most of the complaints come in. See, unfortunately, many collectors never even made it to the vehicle mode, so a third of this figure's brilliance tends to get downplayed. But is the conversion actually that difficult? Honestly, I'd argue no. A lot of people claim this is the worst conversion Studio Series has ever given us, and I just can't agree. At least I've never had any issues with it personally. The real trick is to do the bottom half of the body first, and then that gives clearance for the entire top half. And do take your time, because this entire top section here is clear plastic. It's mostly durable, at least from my own experience, and I have heard some conflicting things. But as always, just take it easy. Don't rush it, the toy's not going anywhere. It's not the ice cream truck going around the block, it's still gonna be here when you get back. So the first thing you want to do is bring out the feet, just so you've got clearance for everything else. Come to the top and separate the entire roof. That'll then allow you to unclip the leg from there, and the same on the other side. And you'll notice in there that the waist is actually on a hinge. So you sort of just yoink the hinge down that gives a little bit more clearance, so it moves back a bit. It should allow you to start transforming the rest. Come to the bottom, the feet flip out like so. Take said feet and make sure they're unclipped. If they haven't been already, you should have done at the start. And bring the feet around like so. Take the wheels, they're on double hinges, and you want to bring them back just like that. So you see they sort of come in and backwards, just like so. Take this panel here and rotate it down, and bring the Porsche logo panel down like that. And now you should have clearance for everything else. What you want to do is take this and separate it off the top, flip this down on its double hinge like so, should snap into place nice and solidly. These sections untab from the sides, which will then allow you to unclip the wheel and bring it up, and then bring this out on its sort of hinge there. Come to the front, take these two side sections and push them out of the middle. That will form the torso, which you just bring down. Push these two parts together and clip it into place there, forming a nice bra. Yeah, we can easily tell Mirage has been on HRT. Click these into place, like so, with the shoulders. The waist rotates around 180 degrees, and then you take that double hinge there and lock it into place. This part can rotate backwards, allowing you to make use of the double hinge here that slots this behind the head. And last but not least, we have the double hinges here that push that back into place and it sort of locks in satisfyingly. And we're done! With a lot of really complex conversions that a lot of people hate, I can at least empathise with the issues. Even if I don't agree, more often than not I can see where the people are coming from. But genuinely, I don't understand how this conversion is supposed to be difficult. It's exactly the same as all the other previous Studio Series Deluxes. Yes, it's a panel former, and yes, it has clear parts, but it's the same as all the rest. I honestly don't know what you were really expecting at this point. It's not the best conversion I've seen in the line, and it's not quite as good as Umezu's other works, but still, it's pretty alright. I'd happily do it again.
Studio Series has been a line that prides itself on hyper accuracy in both modes, at least to the level they're able to at the price point provided. So whenever a toy in this line has issues with accuracy, predictably the fandom goes ballistic. It might seem annoying to some, but it makes sense given what the line positions itself as. When accuracy is one of the primary selling points, of course people are going to complain when something isn't accurate. Rise of the Beast's Mirage is not accurate. There are a few design cues here and there, but by and large this is a wholly original beast. The torso chunks are where they're supposed to be, but they look nothing like in the film. The thighs are accurate, but everything below them flat out isn't. Weirdly enough, the use of shoulder chunks is actually accurate, but the backpack sure as shit ain't. Not even the proportions are accurate. The screen model is a twink, plain and simple. It's the kind of design that would make paper plane go woozy at the knees. This toy gets close, but the shoulders are spaced further apart to make room for the transformation joints. Consequently, here's more of a twunk. Many Rise of the Beast toys had discrepancies with their CGI models due to being based on unfinished concept art. It's something that keeps happening over and over again, just look at the Bumblebee lineup. Mirage was not one of these cases, however. He released a reasonable amount of time after the movie, likely due to Porsche overseeing the whole operation. And therein lies the actual reason he is different. Porsche placed heavy restrictions on how the figure would be designed. We know from discussions in live streams that the biggest issue they ran into was Porsche not allowing the logo to be split down the middle, leading to the rest of the toy needing to be designed around them. The rest of the kibble and proportions need to be placed in a way where they would not interfere with said panels. So ultimately, Mirage is the way he is. From certain perspectives, you could even argue that this toy flat out isn't Rise of the Beast Mirage. However, if you've been with this channel for a while, you'll know that's not something that necessarily gets marked as an issue in my book. I keep thinking back to Legacy Evolution Breakdown from last year, who the community sh** upon to almost a ridiculous level. The fact he wasn't a Kuntash might as well have been a war crime, given how some people reacted. But in spite of all that, I ended up really liking Breakdown. In fact, I genuinely say he's my favourite of the Stunticons, warts and all. And just like Breakdown, in spite of his blatant inaccuracies, I really like Mirage. He's sort of in his own space, separate from the rest of the Rise of the Beast designs. At the end of the day, he's just a fun little robot. The head sculpt is quite lovely. I wish they'd given him a smirk or something, but he brings the charm of the design to life reasonably well. Just don't look at it too close. Interestingly, this was my biggest concern going in. The stock photos showed a primarily silver head crest being used. And not gonna lie, it looked f ugly. With a silver forehead that would have given Takagi-san a run for her money, the eyes ended up looking awfully squinted. Almost like an unwanted racial stereotype. Here, it ends up looking much more proportionate. And the eyes pop a lot more too. I wish it got some more side to side, but it gets the job done. The torso is alright, the parts are all in the right spots, but without the underhanging kibble, it sort of feels like an approximation. As an approximation though, it does pretty well. I love that the torso is formed from the real parts of the bumper. Faux parts are usually fine in my book, but I appreciate they were able to do it legitimately here. A more staunch car company wouldn't have allowed such. Just look at how petty Lamborghini was, not allowing them to split the windshield on Sunstreaker and his read echoes. Sure, the headlights of the back are pretty conspicuous, but I've never really cared too much about backpack kibble. My main gripe here is how flat the midriff is. It's detailed well, but it's flatter than the monolith from Space Odyssey. I get why it's right up against the ground in vehicle mode. There's no room, so it's understandable. Still a smidge annoying. The legs go for an even bigger departure though. The thighs are straight from the screen model, albeit done in faux parts. However, everything else is bordering on completely original design work. They reference the model whenever they can, but due to how the panels work, more often than not it's just not possible. In many ways, this shares more in common with Studio Series Jolt than it does with Pete Davidson. Oh crap. Well, one of us is gonna have to change. But you know what? I actually really like this. Maybe it's because one of my favorite aesthetics is jewel guns with a trench coat, but I've always loved coattails on robots. These also look a lot more cohesive in comparison to Jolt. They don't jut out in a weird way. I wish I could say the same for the kibble on the side of the calves though. They sort of just sit there, not fitting in with the rest very well. Again, I get why they're here, but they're still annoying. You can flip them up though, and honestly, I think this is okay. It doesn't interfere with the knee joint too much, at least not as much as the wheels at the back. It sort of ties into the windswept look quite well anyway, so I don't see this as an issue. I think the feet are alright as well. I see a lot of complaints for these, but considering they're running off the same old deluxe budget, I don't see what else they could have done. Yes, inflation means that deluxes have gotten more expensive, but I don't particularly think the budgets allocated to the designers have changed. This is please understand the budget, but in an unironic way. Not sure I can live with the articulation though. Most of the joints are here, but a lot of them get stuck on the kibble. There are workarounds, such as moving the backpack panels back a bit, or 
moving the carve wheels out of the way. But it's not stuff you really should need to do for basic posing. It's not hateful, but it is slightly annoying. Still, even so, you can get some really nice poses out of this guy. Especially with the fake ab crunch that you can mistransform, he's a really nice transformer to photograph. There are definitely easier posing experiences in the Studio Series line, but I still have a lot of fun messing with him. Provided I'm gentle with the arms. Umezu-san, why are the arms entirely out of clear plastic? I mean, it's not necessarily something I hate, and I think they're pretty durable as far as clear plastic joints go, but you had to have known the backlash these would get. Right? Was there no way to make the elbow a separate joint? Maybe get rid of the wrist swivel and make the arm one solid piece with a clear insert instead? It's not like the included weapon needs a swivel, if it was a sword I'd understand, but this is a gun that's supposed to look like it replaces the whole thing. Plus this brings a lot of longevity issues to the table. I've had pretty good luck with clear plastic between Jazz and the Earthrise Datsuns, but many have not. It's why this whole opaque window argument came to the table to begin with. Hell, there's been several reports of breakages with this specific figure, particularly going to the vehicle mode. Though, weirdly not on the arms, but rather with the backpack. Again, not sure how this is possible given the ease I have with my copy, but the concern is there. Originally I thought I'd hate the way these arms look, but seeing them in person, eh, they're fine. My main concern is just the longevity. They seem fine now, at least more sturdy than the last few incidents, but I still think it's kinda dumb. Ultimately though, I still think this is a pretty good robot mode. Yes, it's not accurate in the slightest, and yes, it's got issues that prevent it from being the best it can be, but honestly, it's a pretty good deluxe robot. And hey, at least it's interesting, unlike some of the other releases from the toy line. Air Razor and Cheetor make me want to sleep every time I see them shell forming in the toy aisle. I wouldn't have even bothered getting Air Razor if Hasbro didn't give me one at the King's Comics event. Then someone else was so bored they gave me theirs. Then I passed it on to a Guardian of the Fans Toys order. True story. I think he gave it to his son, along with Cyberverse Repugnus. Rise of the Beast's Mirage is far from a perfect toy, but he is fun, and at the end of the day, that's what I place above all else in my collection. I'm aware that for display-oriented collections, this isn't exactly ideal, but that just ain't me. I'm always happy to have a good toy of a character I like. It doesn't necessarily have to be completely accurate to the source material, as long as it embodies the energy enough. And I do think it does, more so than other outings from the film. At least it feels more like Mirage than the mainline, and is an absolute dog sh** like the mainline, it absolutely could have been better, as many fan designs have shown us, but these designs didn't have to account for an overbearing car company insisting their precious brand is tarnished by the oh-so-horrifying disaster of cutting a panel in half. Those toys could work at a deluxe budget, and Hasbro would happily deliver, but Porsche would not. So in essence, SS-105 Mirage and Legacy Evolution Breakdown are brothers in arms, screwed over by corporate fuckery, but secretly hiding brilliance within. That nobody cares about because ranting about a shitty toy is infinitely more popular. But that's the same old nonsense over and over again. Mirage is another silver deluxe in a long line of silver deluxes in Studio Series that everyone gets incredibly angry over. If it's not parts forming, it's weird proportions. If it's not paint allocation, it's size. How dare you buy this reasonably priced, well-scaled jazz figure? You should instead drop triple digits on the out-of-print Human Alliance version, you troglodytes! Genuinely, I hope you get better versions of these later down the line. Maybe they'll revisit Mirage with a more accurate outing in the future. And if that's satisfying, you, more power to you. But for me, I reckon this is a pretty good release. And I'm satisfied. It could be better, but any toy could be better if they didn't have corporate restrictions placed on them. Given the circumstances, and even ignoring said circumstances, I genuinely like this toy. As its own thing, I'm glad to have it in my collection. But as always, fandom public consciousness is a conversation, so drop your thoughts on inaccuracies and limitations below. Do you think it was fair given the circumstances? Is Hasbro secretly Satan and the only way to exercise them is to only buy third party? Which somehow supports Hasbro? I don't get that statement, but I keep seeing it. It confuses me. But never mind, as per usual, remember, there's a context for everything. Till next time.